Recently, the U.S. Navy's next-generation supercarrier, USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, set sail from Naval Station Norfolk on its first combat deployment. The deployment comes nearly six years after its delivery from Huntington Ingalls Industries, Newport News Shipbuilding, and subsequent commissioning in 2017, marking the first new design aircraft carrier delivered to the U.S. Navy since USS Nimitz, CVN-68, in 1975. It's also the first aircraft carrier to join the fleet since USS George H.W. Bush, CVN-77, was delivered in 2009. Nimitz and now Ford-class supercarriers are the symbol of U.S. naval dominance. But over the last decade, rivals have been working to counter them, and as per China, they have a way. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how China destroyed USS Gerald R. Ford Strike Group in simulation. Let's get into the details. According to a recently published report, Chinese military planners have come to a conclusion regarding its offensive ability against the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier and its accompanying fleet. The report states that the deployment of hypersonic weapons has the potential to destroy the carrier and its associated assets with certainty. This information was reported by SCMP, or South China Morning Post. This is the first time that the findings of a war game simulation focusing on hypersonic strikes against a U.S. carrier group have been made public. The simulation, which involved more than 20 intense battles, conducted on a widely used war game software platform utilized by the Chinese military, demonstrated that Chinese forces were able to successfully sink the USS Gerald R. Ford carrier fleet by launching a salvo of 24 hypersonic anti-ship missiles. These details were disclosed in a paper published in the Chinese language journal of Test and Measurement Technology in May. As depicted in the simulation scenario, despite receiving multiple warnings, the U.S. vessels persisted in approaching an island in the South China Sea, which China claims as its own territory. The outcome of the war game revealed that nearly all of the U.S. surface vessels suffered severe damage and eventually sank due to the attack. Two models of hypersonic anti-ship missiles were unleashed during the simulation, some originating from the remote Gobi Desert. According to the report, the Chinese military demonstrated remarkable prowess with their sophisticated launch strategy, executing a complex three-wave attack to outsmart the formidable defense systems of the U.S. carrier group. The U.S. fleet involved in the war game consisted of six surface ships, carefully selected for their advanced technology and unmatched strength. The flagship of the fleet was the CVN-78, Gerald R. Ford, accompanied by CG-56 Ticonderoga-class cruiser San Jacinto and four DDG-103 Arleigh Burke-class Flight 2A guided missile destroyers. The Gerald R. Ford class carrier, commissioned in 2017, boasts cutting edge features such as electromagnetic launch system, advanced radar, and electronic warfare systems. The cruisers and destroyers within the carrier group were also equipped with advanced weapons and defensive measures, including radar systems capable of detecting and tracking multiple targets simultaneously. The air defense missile arsenal of the carrier group consisted of 264 missiles, including the RIM-161E SM-3, designed for intercepting ballistic missiles. To maintain a realistic assessment, the war game simulation placed certain restrictions on the Chinese military, including limited access to spy satellites and a constrained supply of hypersonic missiles. Guided by the principle of being lenient with the enemy and strict with oneself, the simulation aimed to provide an objective evaluation. The two models of anti-ship missiles utilized by the Chinese forces reportedly demonstrated impressive capabilities, capable of operating at high altitudes and achieving an astounding top speed of Mach 11. Notably, both models had the capability to sink a carrier 
or large warship with only two successful hits. The research paper further disclosed that one model had an operational range of 2,000 kilometers or 1,240 miles with an 80% success rate. In contrast, the other Chinese model boasted twice the range and a higher success rate of 90%. However, the report does not specify the exact names of the hypersonic missiles employed in the simulation. It primarily focuses on the performance characteristics of the two models utilized by the Chinese side. China has two missiles that are specifically designed to neutralize supercarriers or large warships, DF-21D and DF-26B. The Dongfeng-21 is a two-stage, solid-fuel, single-warhead, medium-range ballistic missile MRBM, that has a speed of around 10 Mach a maximum range of around 1,450 kilometers or 900 miles and carries a 600 kilogram or about 1,350 pounds warhead. DF-26B, developed from the DF-26, is the anti-ship variant and can hit naval targets. It has a range of 4,000 kilometers or 2,500 miles and is thought to be designed to conduct precision nuclear or conventional strikes with an accuracy of 100 meters CEP. Apart from these, it has DF-ZF. DF-ZF hypersonic glide vehicle is launched to extremely high altitudes using DF-17, where it skips across the Earth's upper atmosphere and then glides back, attaining hypersonic speed that's more than Mach 5. During the simulation, the People's Liberation Army PLA, detected the presence of the U.S. carrier group through its sea-based surveillance network. Subsequently, they launched eight hypersonic missiles from southern and central China, although these missiles were considered less reliable. While some of the hypersonic missiles were intercepted, the attack significantly depleted the U.S. fleet's supply of SM-3 munitions. As detailed in the report, the People's Liberation Army PLA, then launched eight more precise hypersonic missiles from various regions in China, specifically targeting the carrier, destroyers, and cruiser. Following the attack, four ships from the U.S. side managed to survive, with the destroyers being relatively more resilient due to their defensive armaments. The electronic warfare systems effectively disrupted enemy radar, while the deployment of chaff and flare dispensers confused incoming missiles. Once the PLA confirmed the status and location of the remaining targets, the Chinese military executed a mop-up operation using six hypersonic missiles that were comparatively less accurate but still effective in confirming the destruction of the targets. Through multiple simulation runs, the three-wave attack strategy resulted in an average destruction of 5.6 out of the six surface vessels ultimately eliminating the carrier group. The simulation emphasized the use of lure tactics and target prioritization to maximize effectiveness and conserve ammunition. As observed in Ukraine with the Russian Kinzhal hypersonic missile, these kinds of weapons are very hard, if not impossible, to defend against. SM-6 and SM-3 are extremely capable, but may not be foolproof defense against a barrage of hypersonic weapons deployed from different directions. U.S. planners also know this, and it's likely that they've devised strategies to mitigate the threat, which could include targeting the missile on the ground and taking out Chinese satellites. The war game simulation is centered around the South China Sea region, which has become a key point of confrontation between Chinese and U.S. naval forces. While war game simulations offer valuable insights, they cannot replace real-world testing and evaluation. That being said, the motives behind China's release of the war game results remain undisclosed. Also, independent verification of the data used in the war games is impossible. However, if the data regarding Chinese hypersonic missiles used in the war game simulation deviates significantly from reality, it can undermine the simulation's quality and result in misleading conclusions. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And 
kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.